Roger likes big girls, huh? He, Roger loves big girls. No, but, I mean, don't lie. Don't I'm lie. Pass one up. I'm not going to pass one up. Okay, so he likes big girls. There ain't nothing wrong. More cushion for the pushing, you know? What's up guys, Malcolm Stewart, we're out here at Zach Station around a 252 stroke for the premix video of Transworld. How was it? It was sick. Do you think people are going to be stoked to see the footage? I mean, I think people are going to be like, this is the best video that's ever been made. What are you talking about, boy? Heard you're pretty tired after the end of the day. Uh, yeah, I'm very tired, actually. I mean, we started at 9 and didn't finish till 7 a.m. Not 7 a.m. Might as well. I felt like I was riding while I was sleeping, actually. But uh, no, we didn't, get, uh, we didn't get done until 7, so it was a long day. But that was the difference uh, with riding that two stroke, man, is like, you know, you're not doing a normal, like a photo shoot where you're just kind of playing around where you actually got to try. Like, you actually got to, like, throw it down. And on top of that, being on a two stroke, you know, brings back memories, so you're just, you're feeling it. So, uh, yeah, when I was done, I was smoked. I was, I was done. I was done. So, you were going through some sections, probably faster than I've ever seen anyone ride up here. And we'd have you go through it again, and if you did it really good, you'd get so excited, you'd go a whole lap. Yeah, I was actually going through some section that, I, I, to be honest, I don't think, I, don't, I wouldn't even hit a 450 that fast, to be honest. And the fact that I was hitting it on a 250 stroke going that fast is, uh, it still blows me away. Like, it kind of scares me. I don't even want to ride. <laughs> like, next you know, you want to go through that corner again, because I was like, man, I, I was pushing on the edge, you know, but... It's cool, man. Like I said, riding that 252 stroke, it just made me, it just made me want to push that edge. And uh, like I said, I went faster in some corners that I probably would never do it again on a four stroke. Cool. All right. So looking back on your season, uh, you know, you you put together a, a effort with uh, the ride 365 guys and the seven on an RM 250, RMZ 450. And uh, how do you feel about Supercross? I think season actually uh, it was an up and down season, um, but to be honest, with with everything that has happened and we started out, you know, kind of late, we missed two rounds, and uh, but it's more than just two rounds. What people don't understand, it's the preparation that didn't happen, and then all of a sudden it happened within the two weeks of that. And uh, I was sitting on the couch in Anaheim one, didn't know what to do, and we and we made this plan. You know, we we barely made it to Anaheim uh, Anaheim two. The plan, original plan, wasn't for me. I was actually. A, go out if ride 365 never stepped up thankfully they did but uh, to go out on my own i wasn't going to race to atlanta because that would have been the closest race for me and uh the fact that everything got you know turned around and we made it for anaheim too and we just been pushing through the season uh it, it's 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 a bless you know it's blessing and uh like i said it was it was a fun it was a fun season for me you know it was up and down yeah but it was, i had more fun than i did you know with this year than i did last year you know uh, all the pressure and things like that this year i was kind of laid back and it was just go out there and do the best that we can we knew we were kind of behind on uh on testing and equipment things like that on the outside it looked it looked fantastic but on the inside you know we were still a little struggling a little bit but um we did the best we could, you know, we were actually looked more factory than actual some of the factory teams and that's what we came for, you know, it was, a, it was all about the image and, you know, make sure that we, you know, we showed heart and determination and, we, you know, we showed and we, we raced every round, you know, a lot of riders, factory riders actually got hurt and missed rounds and we're out here spending, you know, our money to go out here and still race, you know, that and, and that shows heart. You know, we, I never pulled off, never just, never just gave up. I still, you know, yeah, the results may not been there. If I got 15th or 10th or whatever the cause may be, I still, you know, I was, I accepted it, you know, and we kept moving. We just try to build each race and kept moving forward. And I'm happy, you know, Vegas was a good race for me. And uh, when I was done with the season, I was just like, man, this, this is it, man. We had a heck of a season. And the fact that, like I said, I finished it all and did everything I could, I'm happy about. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool how, because it was your own team and the team's based on a clothing company, you changed your look of the bike to match your gear every week. That had to be pretty exciting to have something different every week. Yeah, it was, it was actually pretty cool to change up our looks, you know, in the bike. And the, like I said, our, our image was uh, on point and, you know, people, 
the fact that I had people just, you know, standing around my pit, just taking pictures of the bike and our gear set up and our, you know, the helmet, you know, head to toes and matching it. Just, you know, you don't, teams don't do that. You know, factory teams don't do that. And, you know, and uh, I understand from, from their standpoint. So it's cool. It was cool to, to step back and actually be able to change all that, to have the opportunity to change all that. And, and, you know, and, and made it fun. That's what makes, you know, me, that's what makes racing fun. You know, it's, it's not, instead of being a job, it was actually, you know, more like we're, you know, we're changing, we're going back and, you know, after the race, we're trying to come up with ideas and how to, you know, how to change the colors on the bikes and the wheels and all the things, you know, and um, it was cool. And, and uh, the, the, the good thing is like being, you know, part of seven and, you know, Ride 365 and things like that. Everybody was all part of it. You know, everybody was all part of it. And uh, it, it was cool, man. It was cool. Um, so there's going to be fans that don't understand the financial burden of racing and stuff that are going to just say, why isn't he racing outdoors? So. Yeah, well, people don't understand as, uh, you know, the budget I had was, uh, you know, it got, it got pushed by, you know, pretty far. And, uh, you know, I spent 30 grand just in motors, you know, and people don't understand. It's like, oh man, that's crazy. And I actually only had three motors, you know, and, uh, the fact that you you know you can spend that's how fast you can spend money and and that was just in supercross you know and that you know just think about that was in a rotation you're constantly you know changing things because you can't go out on the same motor you know every race you know we're at a professional level you know we're trying to you know we're doing this to to try to make money and um you know it, it, there's no way you could do it if i'm tearing up motors in in 20 minutes you know imagine what's you know what you can do in two 30 minute motos you know so it's uh and on top of practicing during the week so you know the budget we pushed over the budget you know way too far and, and just parts and oem parts and little things like that it all starts adding up clutches and and you know you're going through little stuff that you know people don't see and thankfully i had you know uh you know teams like step up like fmf help me out with some pipes and and um and it, and we had some kids and stuff like try to help me out with the the bikes and stuff like that as far as getting like you know frames and swing arms and things like that but as far as everything else like the small little oem parts and it, it adds up man and um there's no way I could do it, you know, for outdoor season. There's no way I couldn't do it. And if I had a team that would step up and to do it, I would. I would love to do it. I would. I would be if any team called me and was like, "Hey, we want you to race outdoors." I'll do it in a heartbeat. But I can't do it on my own. And um, you know, and we were, and it was all set. You know, Rack 65. They set. They were doing Supercross only, and I respect that. That was that was their deal. They pushed their budget even more than they than they expected to push it. You know, just with everything we were they were doing and. Um, the fact, like I said, that we, we were all, we all put our heads together and we did it together and it was only supposed to be for Supercross only and, and thankfully we made 15 rounds and that's, that's, you know, you know, awesome enough, you know, for us, you know, doing it and, uh, like I said, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and if, we, if we're put back in the same situation for next year, we'll make sure we're at Anaheim 1. Cool. Uh, what was the high point for you? And the low point? Um, the high point uh, of the season, um, it's just showing up, you know, just, just, to, just to be able to be there, you know, with everything that happened and how things weren't going the right way. And just, like I said, just being able to show up at Anaheim too, that was, that was a, the highest. And uh, the lowest, um, there really wasn't. There really wasn't no low, you know. I, every, each and every weekend I felt like I was just building, you know, and I was learning and learning, yeah. My results weren't there, and we were putting in some situation with, you know, with little things like that on, on the chassis and suspension and things like that. But overall, man, it, you know, I had, I accepted everything. This, the same amount of mentality I had for Anaheim, too, is the same mentality I had for Vegas. It was all about just showing up and, and racing and doing the best you can do, you know, and with the equipment you have. And, and I was, you know, my goal was to beat factory riders, and I was beating at least one or two factory routers each and every weekend. I was qualifying out of the heat race and people don't understand, you know, qualifying out of the heat race is a big deal. Like that's a humongous deal. And the fact that I was a privateer qualifying out of the heat race is that shows my skill and speed right there. So um yeah, we you know we struggled in the main event, had some issues, but you know, a lot of times the issue wasn't all just me. There was some other issues that would happen that people didn't get to see, but it was all good. Like I said, I never said anything. I would never uh, bash anybody, and I would just kept, you know, put my head down and go look forward to the next race because I was having fun. Dude, the fan support was crazy. I mean, you're obviously popular. 
Yeah, and all the fans, and, and that was the cool thing with the fans to support me each and every weekend. They were showing up, oh man, you, you got it, you got it, man. We, we're gonna get you, you know. You, you, and, you know, I would come back after the heat race and, and, and qualify out of the heat race and have fans come back running and be like, dude, that was the most sickest thing I ever seen in the world, you know. It was, that was cool, man. Like the fact that, you know, I have fans like congratulating me for a heat race because it's like they know, like, they see like all the heart you know for that i am doing and trying to 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 make it happen and uh it, it's cool it is cool man and, and without the fans man i i wouldn't be here i wouldn't be here at all um, do all girls still love chocolate all girls love chocolate all girls love chocolate man it's uh chocolate city chocolate city <laughs> uh, so you're saying if someone called you and said hey we need you to ride nationals you would so I think uh, I saw you got a new training tool the other day. You stay in shape. I hear that. Hey, look, man. We might have to go to a different area because I don't like snakes. But yeah, uh, I don't know if I want to. Bet. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would. Um, if somebody called me and was like, "Hey, we need you to to move and drop everything and move," if I had to move out of Florida, uh, I would. Um, I would in a heartbeat um, to to get to get back on my feet to go back to you know get to the next level. Yeah, I would. Um, you know, I would uh, definitely. I mean, as long as I can go back there for Christmas and uh, New Year's and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> so you got a new training tool? Yeah, I got me an S Works Tarmac. Uh, got my Garnet shoes and Roy hooked me up. You know, Mike. Uh, he's uh, he killed it for me and uh, that's my sponsor, man. As far as anything I need for equipment, as far as training wise, that's the guy to go to. Roy Cycle. And uh, what's with the brown tires, dude? Bro, you're gonna climb with my brown tires. You know, everybody liked it. Everybody liked it. You know? Brown's the way to go. Look at me. <laughs> Chocolate City. Chocolate City. <laughs> right on. Alright, so uh, what do you got planned for the rest of the summer? Uh, rest Besides of the summer. Training. Uh, what I have planned for the rest of summer besides riding my new S Works bike. Um, to be honest, just, I'm going to be riding. Uh, just doing some videos. Uh, just did a two stroke pre mix video, so that was pretty cool. Um, we're going to do probably some more stuff. You know, I got some more stuff coming up, and I get to go to Italy, get to go to GP, go check that out for the first time. So. Uh, Garnet, they actually, uh, I actually go get to see the Garnet facility over there. So they're from Italy. So uh, I, I've been stoked. I always wanted to see that and how the boots are actually made. So I'm, I'm pumped to see that. And you know, I don't know. I don't really know what's planned. I'm just know that I'm gonna be riding and training and and um, any opportunity. I might get a phone call with the last two races from uh, any team, and I'll go out there. So you got to stay in shape. And uh, like I said, now I got that new bicycle. I'm stoked on that. And I, I can't wait to get home and ride it. Have you ridden it yet? <laughs> I can't. I, I gotta get home and ride it. I'm here. I'm in California. How can I can't ride it if it's there? True, true, true. All right, Malcolm. Well, thank you. Always a pleasure seeing you and get to hang out. Peace. <laughs>